Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video. A couple times a week, we're gonna be featuring my podcast, 50% Facts, some snippets and highlights. Each episode, we dive into one topic, one question, and in the first half of the podcast, me and Jim McD analyze and try to talk about and ask questions on the question. Then in the second half of the podcast, we bring in the world's leading expert to give you everything you want to know on such topics. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you want to find the full episodes, there is a 50% Facts podcast YouTube channel, and it's available on all platforms, iTunes, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera. Check it out. Give this thing a thumbs up. Tell your friends, and I hope you enjoy. So obviously, it depends on the goals, depends on the budget, et cetera. But I guess in the Allen Thralls, Daddy Home Gym, mm -hmm. uh, rack, plates, barbell, what's the next step for you if you got a little bit more money laying around? What's the next equipment? I'd probably get a Prowler sled. Oh. Um, that'd be my conditioning tool. Yeah. Uh, push that out in the front. Um, uh, as far as like incorporating something like strongman, um, I think that, uh, sandbags are good. Um, mm. you can do carries with them, which would Makes simulate sense. like a keg carry or something, or you can do, uh, loads with them like a stone, uh, without having to, you know, pick up Atlas stones in your garage. Make it uh, yourself. Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah, or uh the rogue sandbags I think are the best. I've used the the Iron Mine sandbags um and the Cerberus Cerberus uh, uh uh sandbags. I've used military duffel bags. They all rip and break. Mm -hmm. um, rogue seems to be the the best. So, there you go. And the, you just get the just for people who are not thinking about the logistics of this, like you get the bag and then you buy the sand yep. and put and you it just in buy the bag. Sand and fill you don't, the sand. They don't ship you a sand bag, so right, right, right. you will not be using it the first day unless you have prepared by going yep. to Home Depot and yep. getting a bag of sand. Yes, exactly. You okay. get the you get the bag and then you fill it with sand, and you should fill it with. If you're thinking about doing this with uh, washed play sand, right? Not dirt. I've filled. Uh, I've tried to be cheap and just filled sandbags <laughs> with dirt. Yeah, um, and the dirt all the fine dust uh every time you drop it it's just poof, yeah, cloud yeah, of yeah. dust everywhere yeah and the sandbag gets filthy so if you're sweating you're just like covered in mud almost uh because the the dirt just comes through the sandbag and if there's small rocks uh in that dirt it does tear the sandbag up so you have to use actual like clean play sand makes sense yeah it does make sense so l let's ask a kind of a, a programming question if you're a power lifter um would you could benefit from having that kind of tool in your uh, in, in in your options, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that uh, uh, incorporating some sort of conditioning into your routine, just depending on who you are, mm. is always a good thing. Uh, and uh, carrying a sandbag or doing like sandbag over shoulder right. or something like that, um, I think is definitely useful, especially when someone wants to incorporate conditioning. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to make them buy a treadmill, and typically. I don't know if it's an overweight guy. I'm not going to go tell him to you know run a couple miles. No. Um, so maybe just carry some sandbags. Uh, so I think so. But certainly uh, you could do well in powerlifting and never touch a sandbag. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that for uh, someone who trains in a home gym, yeah, surely it could you be can't, could be useful. Can't hit a squat PR with a heart attack. No, that's true. And just a conditioning issue about powerlifting, as far as I'm concerned, is that like when you compete in powerlifting, the day is long. Oh yeah. Or yeah. incredibly short. Or incredibly short, yeah. depending yeah. on if where you're at. If you suck, it's over soon. Or, well, or even just, like, just uh, <laughs> <laughs> certain federations now, you're you're in and out in two hours. Yeah, like uh, yeah. a, a national. I've heard nationals at USAPL. They're no, they're like, like on a flight schedule. They're whipping flight. Yeah, I mean, there's like no, there's like two thousand people competing in three days. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. whipping you out. Yeah. If you if you start at ten, you're done at twelve thirty. If you yeah. start at you know twelve forty five, you're done at three. Like you're whipping through. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you get to eat. Where, I like, think. our old-school powerlifting meets, I uh, I squatted. I was a first flight. I squatted, I believe, at 10 o'clock in the morning, mm. and I didn't pull my last pull until 8.45 at night. I stepped off well, the that's platform. A, that's just poor management. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. Yeah, I have yeah similar story. Yeah. <laughs> same, Pretty much same thing. Um, I think that uh, a good argument for being conditioned is uh, if you're able to, you know, I might have someone do some conditioning uh, far out from a meet so that once we start – uh, accumulating a lot more volume, mm. you're better able to handle it. You know, your work capacity sure. is higher. Um, so if you do, I want to get better at powerlifting and I'm like, well, we need to do five or six sets of five. Uh, and that like kills you. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, maybe it's a good idea beforehand to do some conditioning, such a work capacity is there when we actually 
want to start accumulating volume in the, in the right areas. Yeah. It's real cool in 2019 for all these raw powerlifters to bash a Louis Simmons or a Westside or a Conjugate, but mm. something Louis Simmons is huge on. Yeah. Maybe a little too huge, but big on is GPP, general physical yeah. preparedness. And every sport has a level of GPP you need. Mm. Soccer's GPP is pretty big. You need a jog, sprint, turn sideways, all these things. Powerlifting's maybe a little bit lower, but you have to have some kind of recoverability or yeah. fit general fitness. Yeah. Right. No, that makes sense. Um, what do you think about flooring that outside of the, uh, the deadlift platform? Um, I don't think you need anything past that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't see any reason for, as far as for for a garage gym. I don't think you need anything past a platform. Why are they, why are they so fucking expensive? If you buy one, I feel like they're like six hundred to twelve hundred dollars. I know you make for them what? a platform. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh god, no. I would. Yeah. <laughs> but I just why make is them. that? I just I've never bought a platform. I just make them with plywood yeah. and horse stall mats. Um, and you could just do just two layers of horse stall mats, probably if you wanted, right? Yeah. 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 You could. Um, again, just depending on how much you're lifting. Uh, if 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 you were deadlifting like four or five hundred pounds regularly, I probably wouldn't just stack it on horse stall mats. One because the floor is not going to be that protected, mm-hmm. depending on how fast you drop it, uh, and you start to get this spring effect. Yeah. Right. You set the weight down. Yeah. Um, uh, but It'll bounce no, it, back up into your hands pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's just uncomfortable. Yeah. You know what's weird? <clears throat> Alan might have an answer. I don't know if I've asked you this. Both sports, weightlifting and powerlifting, compete in typically standard flooring. Um, a lot of federations in powerlifting do like a short carpet, like an office carpet, mm-hmm. like here. Um, some do uh, all rubber. Um Weightlifting is also often uh, some type of rubber or short carpet at big meets, weightlifting mm-hmm. style. Um, very rarely are either of them on plywood or wood. Why does everybody train on plywood or wood? Well, I have a. I can answer the 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 why carpet. The carpet kind of makes sense. The carpets uh, cover up pee, baby <laughs> powder, yeah, and chalk. Yeah, so it's not happening on wood. Yeah, uh, so it's always grippy. I just feel like. I don't know about weightlifting because that's not my expertise, but like I feel like all powerlifting should just be done on rubber, competing and training. You could do plywood underneath, like you said, to, to, yeah. to the shock and the and the, and the uh, protect the floor. But yeah, uh, it just seems weird to me because you look at every national meet or any even semi well done run meet. And, I think because because carpet will never fail. Yeah, um, like uh, you could have. I mean, even if I hosted a meet at Untamed Strength and I had you know all rubber platforms. Uh, if I had the doors up and it was really wet out, yeah. the rubber gets wet. Yeah, I wonder. Some carpets, I guess, sense. aren't slippery. Because I, I know people, some sumo, so those sumo guys, those guys that don't really deadlift, complain about carpets sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, sumo. Yeah, just yeah. Like yeah, just around. like pushing out. Yeah, yeah but maybe, yeah. maybe it depends I on could, shoes. Yeah, I could see that. I don't know. Um, just, that's just a question I've asked many uh, smart folk, and none of us have answers. That's uh, a good question. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, I, know like, the, I know that, like, uh, powerlifting specific gyms tend to have platforms with carpet. Yeah, yeah, like a like a uh, Alico makes a platform that yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. Barbell um, has one of those. But I, I mean, I, I at Untamed Strength, I have uh, four of the platforms have the wood center, and yeah. the two of them are just all rubber mat. Yeah, yeah, the, um, your little deadlift platform. And I could I could just do uh, you know all rubber mats that works perfectly. Fine. It would make sense for me for a weightlifter because you're moving your feet, and so you almost right. don't want, you want it to be sticky, but oh, not. Yeah. It's kind of like a basketball. Yeah, you yeah. don't want to weightlift on. Yeah, you don't want to do a split jerk on rubber. Right, because yeah. you need to move your feet. But then like they don't really always compete on wood either. I think they do. I think they compete on carpet. Weightlifting? Yeah. No way. Yeah, I think so. It's not always wood. I think it's not always wood. I'm going to look it up right now. You guys continue. I swear, because I've had this conversation with Ben, too, and he's like, oh, yeah, I never thought about it. Because you just, you're, when you're actually competing, you're only on the platform. I would not want to do a split jerk on carpet. You're only on the platform for like 10 seconds, you know? You never really think about it. To the extent you have to slide your feet. And you, and you have to. Oh, here's Wood International in China. Yeah, I, I don't think there's ever been a meet with carpet. I don't know crazy. what it is. I don't think it's wood, though. I don't know. That's a good question. I, I don't think it's wood. That's our nationals. Yeah. It, there's a Chinese well, lifter. Is there, is there sound to it? Oh, probably. Oh, you got to turn it up on the side, yeah. We're looking at, uh, shout out West Kids, Cal, Cal Strength. <laughs> Smash if you can hear his feet. I think it's at the Pan Ams. Yeah, it's too loud. The music's going wild. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the loudest music I've ever That's, heard at a weightlifting yeah. meet by far. Well, listen to his feet. This is picking it up pretty good. Yeah. No, dude, they got the epic Rocky music, music going on. If you can hear his feet clap, because I don't it, think it's carpet. But then look at this, though, you know, because then you go international and you could clearly tell it's wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh yeah, hit that that foot slap. Is yeah, real but clear. I've noticed, and maybe it's just maybe, maybe it's, it's just, just colored a, wood, and maybe and maybe it's just America, or it's like this stuff. I don't know what that is. It's like a uh, track, you know, like clay track. Really? Kind of. It's like a rubber track looking thing. This is a whole separate episode, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, but I don't have the answer. <laughs> well, we need to find somebody who has the answer, right? No one's got the answer. Nobody? No one. There's got to be. I think for 99.9% .9 of people it listening. It don't matter. Uh, flooring doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, this stuff is cool, though. Speaking of flooring, look, if you're trying to go all out, I like this, where the platform, and they use this rubber. It's like somewhere, it's like a wood rubber combo deal. It's like track. It's like mm. probably the nicest Olympic track. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, they put that like in the ground so it's flush with the rest of the garage oh yeah if yeah. you guys got the budget do uh, that uh, it looks <laughs> fucking sick it does look pretty good um what my, oh climate control we don't have to worry so much about in california other than it just gets hot uh -huh. it doesn't get so cold <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> bless you thank you so um thoughts on that is is untamed um do you have any untamed is untamed uh, it's totally not, untamed yeah, yeah it's not climate controlled uh and the only time it becomes uh an issue for me is the barbells um so if it is you know uh raining for a good week uh, -huh. uh the gym gets pretty damp um and so some of the barbells the bare steel barbells mm -hmm. uh will slightly rust get a little rusty um uh but i mean if, if you take if you only have one bar to take care of in your home gym just a little three in one oil every once in a while yeah. is going to protect it um so that is something to consider is uh the bars will rust if it's bare steel mm -hmm. um if you're like uh you know a home gym in louisiana i probably would not go with the bnr bar because it is bare steel i'd get some stainless steel bar um, so that you don't have to take care of it um something with a good coating is not going to break down yeah uh but as far as uh being hot and humid or wet um in the gym and uh, members training there, I don't care. But as far as the <laughs> equipment, yeah, yeah, sometimes it's a pain in the ass. Fans? Yeah, we have fans. Um, Just uh, no heaters. No heaters, no AC. Yeah. Um, so, and it's not, uh, uh, it's it's always, every every winter, there's people complaining about the cold. Every summer, there's people complaining about the heat. Um, and I get it. I know that it gets hot. I know that it gets cold. Um, and it's not that I'm, uh, I'm just, I just don't like hearing it. I don't like hearing <laughs> the complaints. And it's not that I'm, uh, uh, you know, suck it up, don't be a pussy. It's not that at all. I know that it's hot, um, but it's just, uh, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Yeah, there's yeah. I mean, I'm not going to, I rent the place. You'll uh, start to triple your rent. Gonna, grab it. Right, and I'm not going to put, you know, $20,000 yeah. AC in there. Yeah. Um, and even if I could afford it, it would it would be hard to regulate because everyone would have the doors up. Well, someone's it's still going to complain. Hour, yeah, uh, sure. it's 70, Alan. You know I deadlift the best when it's 60. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, seriously. It's too cold uh, in here. It's like July, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Um, but I feel like the gym's 24-hour access. And the unless I had like unless I had the thing locked up yeah, and like regulated, sure. that thing would be going 24/7 for like 4 months in the yeah. summer. Um, so anyways, your gym membership is going to double or you're going to yeah. deal with the heat, yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I guess to wrap it up, uh, the, the last piece that you put in the Allen throw gym. So we got the, the rack, the basics, we got a little sled, maybe some sandbags from conditioning. What's the last finishing touch? Snow cone machine. <laughs> dessert. <laughs> you can't go home without no dessert. Um, I wouldn't put, uh, honestly anything past that. If you're just, if it's just a general, uh, strength training or, or like Jim said, uh, you can't get to the gym so you can finish, you know, your workout mm -hmm. in the gym or I'm sorry, in your garage, bar plates, uh, a rack with a pull-up bar and a place to deadlift. Uh, it's really all you need sandbag for conditioning or a sled. Um, I don't think dumbbells are necessary. Uh, Quick tally of the price then, in Alan's head, under um, or just like under amount, you know, like this will cost under. I think a uh, thousand bucks without shipping. Oh uh, wow! If you got like five or six hundred dollar rack from Rogue, mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, more than a thousand, probably like fifteen hundred. Yeah, uh, five six hundred dollar rack uh, from Rogue, three hundred dollar barbell. Um, let's see, if you were buying like four hundred pounds, well, uh, five hundred pounds in plates. Um, that's probably going to be at least 500 bucks if it's a dollar a pound. Yeah. If you're going out and not paying for shipping. Um, yeah, maybe the Craigslist plates. Yeah. Um, buy some plywood for a deadlift platform, so probably 1500 bucks. Yeah, that's um, pretty good. For like the, the bare yeah. minimum. 
uh, but that would work. I, I've actually, talking about barbells, I think $300 is a good price for a uh, good good enough barbell. Um, Casey Neistat has actually made a video before about uh, cameras. Yeah, yeah. And he talks about diminishing returns, and it's the exact same thing with barbells. If you go from a $100 barbell to a $300 barbell, huge difference in quality. Mm -hmm. You go from a $300 bar to a $500 bar, a little bit less difference. Mm -hmm. You go from a $500 bar to a $1,200 bar, smallest difference. Yeah, and unless um, you're competing on, on the world stage and you need to feel the same barbell right. every day that you're going you to need at like the Olympics. You need yeah. power bar, yeah. um, sure. Uh, but yeah, I think that the difference between a, you know, 100 to 300, that's like the sweet spot of a good barbell and a shit barbell. But even if you're a snob and you want the Alico either powerlifting or weightlifting bar, we're still looking at maybe 2200 then for a, a whole gym. Yeah, that's going to be yeah. that's going to be your home gym double yeah. twice yeah. your home yeah. gym if you're going to buy a bar like that. Um but if that's the case then you're going to be you you better be lifting like 800 pounds. Yeah, you better least, not you know be a I mean? so, sissy. 405 deadlift <laughs> in your like a bar. It's the same kind of thing with talking about using kilo plates or calibrated plates that yeah. are the thinner plates or whatever versus the the just gen pop kind of yeah. kind of plates. Yes, it does feel different, but no it doesn't feel that different. Right. If you're not lifting huge weights, right? Yeah, you know, exactly. if you go into a meet and it's kilo plates, calibrated kilo plates, it's gonna feel a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You want to unrack the squat; it'll feel a little bit different when you pull because the bar will. will there's react also a, a crowd in front of you. A lot there's of things are gonna feel different. There's a lot of yeah. things. Yeah, like you can't bring in a crowd. Yeah. Like right. your conditions are not gonna always be the same. Even yeah. though Shaco told yeah. me they did. He, bring said, he says in Russia they do when they do their gym tests. He'll bring in a little crowd. I like that. Specificity, cool. specificity. That's a thought. Maybe <laughs> how much people watch, yeah. Um, but you just do it like a gym day. Like we could do it untamed. Hey, this Saturday we're all going to test our lifts, yeah, and yeah. then everybody's watching. One person's lifting. Yeah, we'll just put a bunch of lawn chairs out. Yeah, you get a little. Yeah, yeah one guy in a little funny suit judging I like people. It. <laughs> I like pour it. caffeine down everybody's gullet and, uh, <laughs> and go. All right. Well, awesome. Where can uh, people good. find you, Alan? Uh, untamed strength. If you want to find it on YouTube, just you can type in my name or untamed strength. That's not youtube.com slash untamed strength. It's like a thrall seven or something like that. Uh, the website is train untamed. Uh, Instagram is at untamed strength. Mm, that's and Jim, it. Sacramento, California, untamed. Jim strength. is Sacramento, California. Yep. Well, I'm Solomon Mike, two K's Instagram, Twitter. Follow right. us. I am the Jim McD and the show is 50% facts where percent is a word. See you next time. <laughs>